Let me pray before we first look at words, just for this first part. Heavenly Father, I thank you that this morning already we've been talking about your love. We're just going to be rejoicing in it. I pray as we dive into your word and just unpack it a bit more, you would help us look at you. Holy Spirit, just can't be with me. Pray, still my heart, may it be. May I be a vessel of your work, I pray. May we look at you, not anything else. We say your holy name. Amen. 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 Okay. Love. Love is probably one of the most talked about subjects in the entire world. Everyone loves to feel love, wants to find love, wants to figure out love. All these kind of things. And, and love is kind of baked across entire society. And in fact, this last week that we've just had, there's been a whole day about love. And about giving gifts. And as you give gifts, you're kind of showing that you love someone. And if you don't give a gift, hey, you're not loved. Like, that's, that's, that's what the day is. Silly day, but like, that's what that concept is. The whole day in the calendar is about how you need to show love to one another. In this kind of flamboyant way. The topic of love is based in every single human interaction, whether it's family love or friendship, agape, the Bible calls it brotherly love, marital love, parental love. Even the substance without love has a name called hate. Like love is baked in everything. Okay, even the topic of love is the root of majority of films. Hey, Disney, Disney, which I love, Disney has made money on the topic of love for years. For example, look at this. Snow White found love in a stranger who found her attractive, so kissed her. Pinocchio is about a father's deep gap of a love and need for a child to fill it. Dumbo is about love for plans and desire to be filled if you've got big ears. Cinderella is about love um, in the moment that you can find in a stranger and a glass slipper. Peter Pan is about love for youth and holding on to that. Sleeping Beauty is about absence and the lack of love and therefore you fall asleep due to it. Mae Poppins is about a need for a father to show their love to children. Jungle Book is about love for an adventure then gets interrupted by dancing with a panda and a bear and all these kind of things when a boy sees attraction for a girl. Robin Hood is a love for a poor which starts with crime. Little Mermaid is about love for finding different pathways because you want to see the world and see in its beauty. The Lion King is about love for power that then causes disruption in family. Toy Story, yes, Toy Story is about love for ownership, knowing that someone is still going to love you even if you've got their name on the bottom of your shoe. Monsters Inc. is about love and laughter, and it's better than forcing children to scream for some reason. Wally is a love for veganism. Princess and the Frog is a love for a dream. Inside Out is a love for emotions that makes you look bipolar. And Frozen is a love for a sister because you ain't no me, no man. <laughs> love! That's what Disney is! That's what Disney is, right? Every single thing is about love. It's all based around the thing. So what about it? So what? We know love is important, so what? Well, if every part of me is somehow stirred, or changed, or impacted by love, and how I feel about it and where I get it from, the source of where I get the love from becomes really, really important. Like, think about it. If I was to bring in here a little plant and I was to say, hey, can you look up this plant for me? If you were to leave it by itself on a windowsill, it, nothing much will happen. But even by doing that, you'd, you know, you'd be giving it sunlight. And how you nurture a plant is you'd have to give it this good soil and good water and, and nourishment, all these things. Well, how you feed it, it depends on how it grows. In the same way, how we feed ourselves is how we grow. And if we know that love is one of the most important things in the world, in terms of interaction and everything like that, then what love, where we get love from, where we get our definition of love from, becomes vitally important. It's, it's probably one of the most important things that we need to figure out. If I want to grow well, I need to know how to feel. And how I feel comes from how I am loved. It, 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 it always comes back from this understanding. Hey, I, I love talking about identity, and the biggest thing about identity is knowing who you are. And how you are seen, treated, loved, all those things, impacts that mentality. So a source of a lot of these things, a lot of these questions in life is how are you loved? Or where do you get your love from? 
Here's the problem with that. And here's the problem with Disney films and even Scratch from our ice clip before. They don't often have good sources of love. I mean, take Scratch. Scratch is literally, if you don't watch Ice Age, he is obsessed. Love with an acorn. Just love with an acorn. And when he gets hold of the acorn in the last film, it's a beautiful moment where he eats it and the film is done. And it's like, what next? The acorn's done. Or even in the clip with this Mrs. Scratch that you see, when he tries to love her and like as they're falling, she's a flying school can fly away and he plummets to his com comedic death. Like that's like that's that's his source of love. Well, let's take Frozen, for example. Frozen, a great film in, in, in its time, like First, in the first film, what happens? Well, there's a love for a guy. Uh oh, the guy's evil. Ugh, what do you do with that? And then love was found in the sister because it's sibling love. But uh oh, second film, sibling love fails. And at the end, you kind of got this amical scene where one sister is in charge of one place, the other sister in charge, and they kind of like love each other. But it's more like, hope your kingdom does well. It's kind of this really weird scene at the end of Frozen 2 where it kind of meant to be a happy ending, but it's actually like, I'm in this kingdom, you're in this kingdom, we love each other! All these films end with this kind of happy ending, but really their source of love and what they're displaying always has a fault. That's why you can always have a sequel in a Disney film. Because there's always something that can happen. The sources of love are not steady. Society does this as well. Society is based around trying to get you to love different things. Money. Just turn on the TV, watch the next advert. You need more cash to know that you're popular or know that you're loved. Or, hey, you need more things. Buy the next amazing toy. Here's the next phone. Then, then you'll be good in society. Look at the amazing pictures you can take to have the loving memories that you want. Like That society is based on all these things. Money, things, identity, gender. Or try and figure out how you can have stuff. Or a society is based on trying to figure out how you can find the most love. Or how you can fit in the most. And then by fitting in the most, you will then feel love. They're all poor sources. It doesn't make sense. Everything will fail. Therefore, if we think that love is the most important thing, one of the most important things that we need to get hold of. The source of love. If we need to find something that's going to grow us, it's going to help us. Something that's going to be lasting, powerful to help in any situation, sustainable, that we can keep on going on, unending, which means we'll never fight a kind of fall short of it and it will never end, and fresh every day. We need something really important. Kids, I've got a secret for you. It's a really poor <laughs> secret. But I've got a secret. I found it. I found the love. I found the great source of love that, that the world can know. And it's right here in the Bible. I, I found the love that will never end. I found the love that is powerful and sustainable. And you can read it in the Bible. In fact, I was remembering whilst I was preparing this of um, the classic kids song. Jesus loves me, this I know. Do you know it? Jesus loves me, this I know. The Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak and he is Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. By the way, parents, I hope you are playing songs like that with great truth to your kids. We started to do that with Judah, and it's great fun. He loves who's the king of the jungle. He loves to say bubble, 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 bang, bang. It's a kid's song. We used, to, we used to sing all the time. Jesus loves me. This I know. For the Bible tells me so. It's the A, B, C of Christianity. This is the love story of the Bible. Let me paint it for you in the same way that maybe I can portray what a Disney story looks like. A father starts by looking at creation where there's nothing and creates it. And out of all of that, his love for the people that he has created starts to abound more and more and more. In a sense, he made creation for his people to steward. He has a desire, a love for humanity, humanity, us, to fall in love with God. 
But when that love from humanity was broken, the Father God had a plan to restore it all again. Cut to the next scene where the Father is standing with different people, people that sometimes fail, but yet his love had never stopped faltering and now never failed by being with them. And as you read throughout the whole of the Old Testament, this love of being poured out, all pointing to this saviour, all pointing to this prince of peace, one who is a mighty warrior. And then there is a gap. Like this black that just kind of travels over the place for 400 years. 400 years. Four generations, lifetimes. Suddenly, in this black, see someone born. His name, Jesus. Fully God, fully man. Got all of the Old Testament, all that the scene that had been setting up before, answered every single one of them. He was to be the saviour. He was to be the mighty warrior. He was to be the prince of peace. And Jesus went to get baptised around 30 years old. And we have this awesome moment where the father says his love for his son. So this is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. God of all creation saying, it's all that you do, know, in all that you do, know that I adore you, my son. And as Jesus goes on through the rest of the gospel, we, say, we see Jesus walk his, his path, carry out the act that he needs to do, so that we, humanity, is restored with the Father once again. It's the love story of the Bible. It's a remarkable thing. Now, I recognise it's a crude summary, but hear my words. God, the mighty, powerful creator, the one who sits out of time and made everything in time, looks at his son and says, my son, I love you. Then after his son carries out what he needs to do on the cross, which we'll talk about later, he is able to then look at you and say, my child, I love you. That's mad. Like, for example, get this verse, right? Jeremiah 1, 4 to 5. It says, now the word came to me saying, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you to be a prophet to the nations. How many of you have read that, those verses? Some of you? Yeah. Some of you? Sometimes we don't really like the book of Jeremiah. It's one of those books that after like a few chapters, it becomes very prophetic and it's sometimes hard to digest. But in the beginning, chapter one, he's setting himself up. But really see the words for what they are. See these words. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were even a baby in your mother's womb, before you were a concept, before you were an idea, God knew you. God, creator of all, the one who literally spoke creation into existence. God who makes all things, heals all things. God, if, if you wanted it right now, could, could raise up rocks to sing voices. God, God who literally could you know, he walked, he raised the dead to life. Do you know how hard it is to raise the dead to life? God who did all those things knew you. Knew your beginning and your end. Knows all the things that you've done. Know all the things that you're going to do. The good, the bad and the ugly. God looks at you and he knows you. That's such an incredible statement. It's a love-filled statement. That any, any part of you, he knows. There's times where I reflected that as I was praying this week, I was like, yeah, but God, I've done this. Like, I, I've been in such depth in my mind at times. Like, God, I, I've been at moments where I wanted to be done with everything. And I just felt God say to me, yeah, but I knew that. I knew what happened to you. I know what happened to you. And yet I still love you and I want you. The Bible doesn't have any aspect of a forced love. 
It's not a requirement of God to love us for him to be God. Does that, does that make sense? It's not a requirement of God. One of the, it, doesn't make, it doesn't qualify God to be God for him to love us. It is a choice of God. It is in his nature, it is in his character for him to love you. Completely, wholly, wonderfully. Nothing can be done to stop his sovereignty of being God. God. And yet, all that he does, he does to love you. It means that, that there's nothing that you can do that can stop that love. Tick about the greater source. There's nothing that you can do to stop him from loving you. Tick. It means that if he's God and he's outside of time, it will, this love will never, ever, 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 ever stop. Tick. It means that every single day you can wake up and know that God loves you and it's fresh every morning. Tick. It's a love that never fails and it never gives up and it never gives up on you. Tick, 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 tick. It is the greatest source of love that we will ever be able to find. The question is, how can we receive that love? And how is that love displayed? Well, that's going to come in our second part as we look at this verse. Okay. So if that's been set up for you in terms of what we're going to. Now, Ben is going to share some notes. Can you welcome Ben? Um, so, yeah, one of the notes, um, notes is our lovely, uh, can we just send around the golfing baskets? Um, so, on Tuesday, we have our monthly prayer meeting at uh, 8 here. Um, so, that's just going to be a great time of worship um, and just an opportunity to pray together. Um, and also, Wednesday and Thursday, straight after that, we have our prayer days at Sync Up. So, that's just with the new, um, wider New Ground family. Um, and us as staff go to that, but if you want to come to that as well, then you can sign up on the uh, newsletter which will be going out this week. Uh, on the 19th of March, we have our baptisms and church lunch. So if you are thinking of getting baptised, then you can talk to Jeeves. Um, and then, yeah, followed, following that, we have our church lunch. So, um, yeah, we'll be bringing the chair and then, um, yeah, just so just bring stuff along. Uh, and then, yeah. Uh, as you know, 14th, 16th of April, we have our weekend away and we have a little video for that. So, yeah. Well, Hope Church Seven Oaks, a time where we can have community, fun, laughter, great food has finally come upon us as we head into the 14th and 16th of April to join our weekend away at Highly Centre here. A time as family where we can come together all the way in the middle of Hertfordshire and be in a place away from everything else and actually have some proper family time. Come enjoy over 40 acres of land as we spend some time resting, relaxing, also diving into the words together. Look at this place! With three hot meals a day, we get to enjoy time feeding well, all provided by the great Highly Centre themselves. And come join us in this room, Yew Tree Hall, as we gather together to get to know our Lord Jesus better. And as we spend time in worship and praise, joined by Jim and Dominique Partridge from King's Church, Miss Sussex, and ready to see what our God wants to do on this weekend together. With 150 places, and £100 for 17s plus and everyone else go free. Why would you miss out on a weekend together to just see what God's going to do? Come, 
Join us 14th to 16th of April right here at Highly Centre as you make a difference and see how we get to know God better as Hope Church Severance. Get involved! Okay, how does the Father show love? Let's talk about this. How does the Father show love? Um, come to the Bible verses in a bit. Well, we looked at the most important source of love and where to find it. Yeah, we find it in God. However, how does that love get displayed? It's kind of all well and good knowing that we get this good source of love and all that kind of stuff, but how does the love actually get displayed? Because I think we're all sure that we like to receive love. And we like to know how to receive it. There's, used to, there's this kind of concept. Have you ever heard of the five love languages? Have you heard of five love languages? There's this concept of trying to break down love. I've got mixed feelings about it, but I think it's a good conversation starter. Where you're just trying to find how to show love and how to kind of um, receive love in different ways. And I think there's different examples how we can do that. So I've got some examples for me, and this is where I'm going to need some help. So kids. Can you come up, and we're going to see how many we need. I think I only need 10. So can I have any kids come up? And I also probably need an adult to just make sure the kids are in line. Gabby, can you come up as well, Gabby? Thank you. Cool. All right, I, I'm not sure I'm going to need all of you, but you're going to have to share some as well. So Gabby is going to take all of these. And then Gabby, if you can take them back and show that. Yeah? Cool. So first one, first way of showing love. First one, yeah. Who am I giving to? Oh, just turn it around and give something. So buying flowers or gift. Now, this is what we're going to do, kids. We're going to come up with a scale of love. So if we think this is not as much love, and we think this is, oh my goodness, there's so much love, <laughs> where on the scale do you think it is? So if we go to someone, you think it's in the middle? <laughs> so you go, you go there. So you think buying gifts there. So turn around, show everyone. Kids, if you go all to that side, because you're all very much loved by the Father, so go all the way, all the way there, um, but this is just an example. So, Gary's going to give one of you, and you move them over, we get it. Okay, cool. Cooking a meal. Cooking a meal. Ooh, who loves a good cooked meal? Yeah, we love cooking. meal. So give it to someone, where do you think it is? So, John, where do you think it is, Jobba? You think it's there? Cool, turn around. And show it to you, turn around. Cool, okay, next one. Oh. Washing the dishes. My type of love, my type of love. What do you think it's Crystal? This way. <laughs> Very good. Crystal, don't worry, all the people mo like groaning and that kind of stuff were parents that uh, um, have a dishwasher. Okay. <laughs> Watching a film or show that you don't like but they do. Where do you think kids that is on that list? Think about that. So you don't like watching that many shows? Okay, fine, fine. All right, let's go to the next one. A good chat, a good conversation. Who likes a good con conversation? Where do you think it is? About there? Yeah, about there, okay. Yeah, if you were an external processor, you'd be like, <laughs> put me over there. Anyway, yeah, tell me about it. All right, next one. Yeah. Writing a love letter. Oh, this is cute. Where do you think it is? Where do you think it is? <laughs> and, and this is what kids think of love. Very good. Okay, next one. Mowing the lawn. Mowing the lawn. Really, don't it? <laughs> Chores is a taboo word in the household, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Okay. A big, big hug. Big hug. <laughs> Fair enough. Next one. Saying something encouraging. This is nice. This is a nice one. This is a nice one. Where are you going? <laughs> okay. Next one. High fiving. High five. High fiving type of love. Sorry, can we just pause it? Are we saying a high five? Good. That's it, that's... <laughs> Washing the dishes is less lovely than a high five. The last one here. Marrying. What do you think that is? 
For a second, I thought. For a second. Right, rest of you kids, do you want to just stand with other people? You'll, you'll be sitting down in a second. Okay, cool. Thank you, Nancy. Well done. So, this is our kind of range of love. Yeah? Are we happy with this, kids? You all happy with it? Yeah. Adults, are we happy with it? No, obviously not. All the mums are saying, washing the dishes. Up there, please. Over there. If I were doing your homework, would you all put it down at the bottom, yeah? Yeah, yeah. yeah good one. Okay, fair enough. Um, so we've got a kind of list of love. Now, we could have added a whole bunch of other stuff, right? And we, we all know there's different ways that we can display love. And we could have had a different all of those kind of things. And we know, we know the world displays something different ways. Some better for individuals, that kind of stuff. That's why we all would have had a, probably a slightly different list. Better way. Me personally, I love a good conversation. Or I love um, having a big hug. I love that embrace. That for me is a good way to speak up. For some people, they're like, physical contact, <laughs> get away from me. Like, <laughs> COVID has been since 2020, like 2002. Like, get away. Do you know what I mean? Like that, like that kind of aspect. So when we're talking about God's love, Kids, God's love has got to go somewhere on this list, right? Now, it's got to be probably, we all kind of know this, it's got to be kind of here. God's love has got to kind of be here. Because let's be honest with it, if we're talking about God's love is this great thing, and God's love is kind of in the middle of washing up dishes and mowing the lawn, it'd be pretty rubbish, right? If God's love is here, that a high five, where's the high five? Oh no, that's down there, not high five. If buying flowers or a gift is better than God's love and how God has displayed his love, this God's love is not that good. So God's love has to be, has to be on the way over here. So how? How is God's love displayed? Well, let me tell you, let me tell you a bit about it. In fact, instead of me telling you, let me show you it. Kids, why don't you have to turn around and look at this? Look at these verses, right? This is what we're going to look at. Classic verse, John 3, 16. You might remember we talked about this in Kids Work a long time ago. We love bringing it up. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Wow! Eternal life! It's pretty good, isn't it? Or 1 John 4, verse 9. If this love of God was made manifest among us that God sent his son, only son into the world that we might live through him. It's pretty good. Yeah? Yeah? You think it is? Yeah. We need to join. Yeah. Yes, okay. It is pretty good. So let's unpack these verses a little bit. Turn back around. Let's pack these verses a little bit. So God, eternal one, sent his son. We've already heard what God thought of his son. He loved his only son. And how he loved his son is a complete model of us as parents, how we get to love our children. I get from my father the model of love and how I speak over my child. I speak words of affirmation and love over and telling Judah Jai how much I love him. Complete aside, husbands and dads, regularly and daily, Tell your wife and your children how much you love them. I think, I think that is a biblical model of what fatherly and husbandly love is. And if we don't tell them that we love them, we don't tell the reasons why we love them, I think there is an absence of modelling what godly love is in, in the relationship, in the family. So husbands and, and, and fathers, I want to say this, I felt this really convictingly, daily tell your spouse and your children, how much you love them. It's an important thing. Anyway, Father God tells us something, but we know there's a gap in humanity. Okay, so kids, this is what we're going to do. I want you to put all your papers down this time, and I want you to all go over to this side here. Okay, go to this side. This is what we're going to do. So all of you, you've got all your different models of love and that kind of stuff. How many fathers sent his son? We know how much he thought of his son. But now this is a different line. Right, we've got a different line here. I need someone who's just, because I was going to get Ian Lane, but Ian Lane is not here. Um, Steve, could you come here? Sorry. Thanks, Steve. Think of someone who's a great man of faith that I, I admire greatly. Sorry, Steve's here. 
Okay, so all of you, your different models of love, this is what we've got, right? We've got humanity and we've got gods. And there is, and there is a gap, right? Small um, There's a gap. Now this is what you've got, you see where the papers are? Right, it's, tr it's like leapfrog, it's like steps that you're trying to cross over. Now, do you think that you can love God by high-fiving him enough? Like, do you think you can win or, or stop that gap by high-fiving God enough? Probably not. Yeah, probably not. Well, let's move along. Or do you think if you kind of said something encouraging to God, do you think that would kind of make the gap between God and humanity? Probably not. Like, even if I was to go to this, this big bit, like, or, or buying gift flowers or gift, or even marrying, do you think that would make the gap? I mean, how do we even marry God? Like, how do we even do that? Do you think that can make the gap? No, so there's got to be one mechanism of how we make the gap from humanity to God. These things on the list won't do it. I'll tell you what the gap is. Jesus. That's who made the gap. That's what these verses are saying. That God sent his only son that he loved, Jesus, that he loved, to come onto the earth and live the perfect life and to die. And to die. Put to the cross. So that this gap was now filled. And we can walk, can walk over <laughs> and be with God now and forever. Here's the beautiful thing about the analogy. Every single thing on this list is stuff that I do. Jesus is about what he has done. Every single thing on this list is about what I do. Jesus is about what he has done. Jesus closed the gap. That's why we can say his blood washes us white as snow. Now I'm in sin, I'm free. Because Jesus paid it all. Jesus closed the gap. So God, wanting to show how he loved us, restored humanity back with the Father, that this gap will forever be eliminated and will never exist again. That all, all, all that believe shall not perish, but have eternal life, eternal relationship, completely united with the Father again. Thank you, kids. You want to sit down? Thank you, Steve. Thank you. Let me laugh. The world considers the symbol of love in many different ways. Majority of the ways is with a heart. The heart of where the blood pumps, and it's kind of where you often think about how I feel. I love you with all my heart. That's often the phrase. What I mean by that is the very thing that pumps out my body, I love you with. God looks at love and his symbol is slightly different. His symbol is the cross. Have you ever considered, I've talked about it before, have you ever considered why the cross is the icon of Christianity? Literally something that the Romans even determined was the most crucial thing that you could possibly do. Have you ever considered that? And yet God took that, repurposed it, and made it to the icon and image of love. Because he pinned his son onto the cross so that you may be loved. I'll tell you what, the 14th of February, getting some flowers might show you a, a little bit of kindness. But you won't find love on the 14th of February. You'll only find love in one place, in one place alone. And that's at the cross of Christ, where God the Father pinned his son to it, slain for our sins, so that we, we, no ex exception, no caveats, no outsiders, we all may know the love of God from now to the end of time. It trumps every single list. God poured his love over me. It's not just a concept, but it's a reality. Reality for all ages. Not just for adults, but for kids as well. That we need to show. <laughs> I know that I'm a child of God because of what his love is for me. 
just to finish the new chairs, some of you might have read them already, you'd see a little track that we, we kind of give you. It's called the Father's Love Letter. What it is, just so you know, is basically uh, written by, um, I can't remember his name, it's on the sheet, um, but what someone has done is he's taken a whole bunch of Bible verses and he hasn't taken them out of context and he hasn't changed the word, but he's layered the words one after the other to write a love letter from the Heavenly Father to you, your child. That is our gift to you. It's one of the biggest things I could give you to just let you know that you are loved by the Father. So please take it, receive it, take it away. On the back of it, there's also a prayer that if you've never given your life to Christ, it's a prayer that you can read. But I just felt like just to land in the way that, sorry, I'm rushing. Parents, can you read that to your children tonight? Sorry, I went on my notes. I really think it's important. Parents, um, as they go to bed tonight, read that love letter over your children that they may know the Father's love over them. Sorry. How do we respond to this then? If you, if you don't know the love of God, if you're not a Christian, how do you actually respond to this? Well, as he has made a way in to be united with the Father, so he's made an easy way in for us to respond. It's the free gift that costs everything. Because it's the gift that costs ourselves turning to the Father and walking that line across Jesus' blood to join him. And Alpha, which is a great course, and we have many of these books, if you want to know more about Jesus, we'd love to give you, we'll join our Alpha course in May. Teach us a very simple thing, which is sorry, thank you, please. Sorry for what I've done. Thank you for saving me for Jesus dying on the cross. Please help me to live a life for you forever. As I close, just want to pray a prayer to give those who have never, never made that step before, who might never have known the Father's love in their life before, to make that chance to say, I want it. From the youngest to the oldest. Kids, if you've never prayed that prayer before, you don't need to wait till you're 18 to do so. Because the Father's arms are open wide for all to come and get to know. So in this moment, can we just shut our eyes and close our eyes if that's okay? Just close your eyes. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pray a prayer. And if you want to pray a prayer, if you want to say it after me, then please do say after the words. Say the words, but mean it with all your heart. That's what the Bible instructs. It's not just saying words for words, it's saying words that we mean with intention. And after that, while everyone eyes are closed, I'm just going to ask if you prayed the prayer for the very first time to lift up your hand, because I really want to speak to you afterwards. Okay, here we go. Heavenly Father, thank you that you love me. Thank you that you chose me. I'm sorry for living a life without you. I thank you that you have forgiven me and I've been made white as snow. Please help me to live a life for you with the help of the Holy Spirit from today till forevermore. Your holy name, Amen. If you keep your eyes shut, just for a second. If you prayed that prayer for the very first time, can you lift up your hand now? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, God. There you go. Keep your hands up and pray that prayer for the first time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, put your hands down. Open your eyes. Thank you. If you put your hand up, I would love to speak to you. I'm going to stand up front for a bit. Love to speak to you. This is where we're going to close our meeting. I think there's a prayer team that will be on the side. So if there's anything that's been talked about, um, you can receive prayer. Kids, you have been fantastic today. Thank you so much. And so what we've done. Oh, yeah, that's Captain. Why not? Yeah. That's the yeah. Um, and so if you would like to, we have bought as our little gift to you as well um, a whole bunch of sweets, but you can find them at the back. Um, or if you see Judah, he's gone into the kitchen. Uh, you can get some sweets from him as well. Thank you for joining us today. We will see you on Tuesday night, prayer meeting here at 8pm. If not, we'll see you next week. Be blessed. Have a great rest of your week.
How long must we wander? To find our significance. To hold that which remains. Love. Have we seen its fullest form? For how we seek in shallow waters that which runs so deep. We feel the fire of affection, the warm glow of being seen. And yet we're still left hoping for an expression that convinces where passion and romance fail, where pain embraces beauty. Love, like the baby in a womb, breathing yet unborn, cradled in affection, a new hope and reward. Like the father standing with his son as waves break upon the shore, a life raised into fullness, sheltered from the storm. Like the boy who learns to carry the one who cradled him before, who holds his mother like a treasure as his duty and reward. I have heard a story, ancient words retold of a man, the face of love, who chose death instead of thrones, and there the fullest love displayed in sacrifice. Upon the day, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, lay down in my grave. Love that never ends is given when a man lays down his own life for a friend. Oh,